which is Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, which can be found on, uh, in your pew Bible on 567. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the ways of sinners, or sits at the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. For whatever he does prospers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday, and that just happened last Wednesday. And I want to thank our confirmation students for helping during that service. And then we have all this period of time that leads up to Holy Week with Palm Sunday and then with um, Holy Thursday. And Holy Thursday, we'll have our own service here. And um, we're going to be um, looking at the Stations of the Cross. And then on Friday, we have our cluster um, worship service for Good Friday. And that's going to be at Sumption Prairie United Methodist Church. And the various churches around here are going to participate in that. And it all has a crescendo with Easter. When Jesus rose from the dead. And Lent is a very serious time of reflection. And it's a time of introspection. And it's a time where we think about the merit of Jesus dying for us. And so I invite you to that kind of meditative spirit during this time. But it really is about Christian growth. It's about becoming stronger. It's about our faith being riveted and centered on God himself. And so I want you in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul to just open yourself up and say, God bring life and help that life to grow and increase. Now, it has been a beautiful winter. I am sick and tired of the beauty of snow. <laughs> Do you know there's beauty in little, little flowers coming up? Saplings finding their way. And that's what's going to happen in the next month or so. It's going to happen. It will. And, and so here in the midst of this time when we think of, 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 of the, the sacrifices of Jesus, we also think of life. And so I am, during this Lenten season, I am going to um, become your resident dendrologist. How's that? What, what do you think, Jim? Did I say it right? Okay, 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 good, good, good. Now, a dendrologist is someone who studies trees. Trees and strong trees and healthy trees and fruitful trees, they're living, they're growing, they're becoming. And I have this aspiration for you. It's the same aspiration I have for me. I dream that you and I will grow mighty. Mighty in faith. Mighty in character. Mighty in life. God uses our weakness for sure so that we depend on his strength, but as we depend on his strength, we actually become strong. And so this is my desire, this is my prayer for each one of us. So I thought I'd start with an admission. Biology wasn't my strongest class, especially when we tried to understand photosynthesis. It doesn't make sense to me that sunlight on a leaf becomes energy within a tree, which makes glucose, which means the tree feeds itself. I don't know how that happens. It doesn't make sense to me. It's like this miracle of life. 
It really is wonderful. But even though I didn't excel at biology, that meant this week I've been doing a lot of study. And so I want to tell you a few things about trees. Number one, do you know if there were no trees, we would not be alive? Do you know that? Now, this, this is amazing. Oh, I inhale oxygen. Oh, I exhale carbon dioxide. Do you know what trees do? Trees absorb carbon dioxide and they expel oxygen. So we, we're like inter, interrelated, okay? It's a pretty cool deal. You get rid of all the trees and you get rid of yourself, all right? This wonder in nature of how God makes one thing dependent on another thing and together we have life. It is truly, truly beautiful. Trees... Um, also provide building materials. They provide fuel, like, like uh, in my, in my wood-burning fireplace. Uh, paper is made of trees. Trees, we, don't, we just don't stop and think. And what about beauty? Oh, by the way, if you have a, a very healthy tree on your property, your property value goes up. If that tree starts falling apart, your property value declines. Okay? That's true. Um, do you know trees are the largest living organisms on earth? Redwoods. Redwoods can grow up to 360 feet. Um, do you know that trees are among the oldest living organisms on earth? Oak trees can live 500 years. It's not, can you imagine? You might be standing next to an oak tree that has been there before America became a country. Do you know that sequoia trees can live up to 2,500 years? Amazing. Now, they get weathered and, and everything, but yes, and the Bristol Cone Pine, there's, uh, there's some of them that are 5,000 years old. They have been mighty. They have withstood storms. They have held on. They have endured. They have overcome and still do. Now, there are two types of trees, hardwoods with broad leaves, and they lose their leaves in the fall, and then in the spring, they grow back. The cycle of life is pretty amazing. So we've got the hardwoods, and then we've got the conifers, and they have narrow, leaf, narrow needles, and, and they just kind of shred themselves, and new ones come in, but they're green usually, and, and they... They just um, remain green like the pines and that kind of thing, even in winter. Now, I'm going to tell you about the major parts of the tree. The trunk, the branches, leaves, and fruit. And below the soil, there are roots. Each and every part does some function or something to produce fruit and life, and uh, um, greenery, and that kind of thing. Now, what do you need in order to survive as a tree? You need sunlight. Amazing that I'm told that the sun is like, like way, 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 way out there, and yet the very beams from that sun are necessary in order for us to have life on earth. And water, essential that trees have uh, uh, water. And some trees need more water than other trees. And then air, and this is where the carbon dioxide and the oxygen come in. And then they need a medium. Usually it's soil, but something that that 
from which the nutrients are able to come from up through the roots and into the tree and out to, out to the, the limbs. Um, have you noticed that every little seedling and sapling doesn't become a great tree? Some are stunted. Some are diseased. Some are weak, and they just die off. And yet, sometimes, even in harsh environments, there's a different result. What makes one tree find its way and grow straight and tall, and another tree just never really make it? What is the difference? What does that all mean? Well, I think Psalm chapter 1 is written simply and beautifully, and it describes the person who will become mighty, who will be healthy, who will mature, who will be thriving, and who will find the way to fruitfulness and prosperity. Psalm 1 helps us with all these questions, not about trees, but about you and me. The Bible is filled with metaphors, these word pictures. And this, in these next several months, I'm going to be looking at different scriptures that talk about different, using trees to talk about life and growth and strength and maturity spiritually and just in general in life. And so Psalm 1 is the perfect place to begin. Psalm 1 is a snapshot, just a glimpse of what a healthy, fruitful person looks like. Isn't it interesting that this is the chapter of all the 150 psalms, this is the chapter that lays the foundation. And it goes like this. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water. You might look at your announcement sheet and see a picture of the tree, the fruitful tree by the stream. The streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither Whatever they do prospers. I want to share growing mighty involves getting our facts from the word of God. There's a contrast. It's like the person who is truly blessed or favored by God or that God looks at with esteem and delight, that person is the one who is not getting their information from the ungodly, but from the word of God. Now notice here, it, it, it says that, that this person does not walk, stand, or sit. Do you see the progression? You, if, if, if you simply walk with the ungodly, you're going to be standing with the ungodly eventually, and then you're going to be sitting with them, being part of them. Now, I don't believe this means we should have nothing to do with people who don't love Jesus, okay? But I do believe it means we need to be aware and we need to be cautious, lest we get our source of information about life and how it is to be lived from the world or from mockers or from people who really don't have a respect for God. 
And I, and I, don't, I don't mean to name names, but I'm telling you, there's a few late night people that come to my mind. So, where do we get our source of information about truth and error, or right and wrong? Well, this says that the person who is blessed get their facts about living from God's word. Blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord. I don't know. When you open your Bible, is it like, it's my daily chore? Or do you open your Bible and say, oh, I get to learn more about God and myself and what God wants to do with this world? The person who is blessed looks at the will of God, looks at the plan of God, looks at the purposes of God and says, I want it. I want that. We need to cultivate an attitude of delight as we open the God's word, knowing that we're looking at truth, knowing that we are having this sense of how did God create this world to work? And how do I go against God's purposes and plans? And I need to stop that. And then I love this. Um, that blessed person um, they treasure the time they set aside for reflecting on God's law. It says, and this person who delights in study of the word, it says that they meditate day and night. It's not that they just did it and it's over. It's like they think about it. It's like, they go back and reflect. And specifically, how does that reply, uh, apply to my life, to my day, to my relationships? And you see, if a person is centered on wanting to please God rather than to laugh with mockers of God, it will be a priority for them to spend time Letting God's word shape them. How cool is that? I, I, this is what I want for myself. This is what I want for you. It is pretty cool that night and day we just meditate. Now, we got a few farmers here. And, and boy, I'm in trouble. I'm talking about trees and farming. <laughs> you all can come up and correct me later, okay? But I'm telling you, a cow chews its cud, and then it will digest it, and then it will bring it up a little more, and then it will um, get it out. And it, it's, that's, what, that's what the word ruminate means. It means like a cow does when it's digesting its food, and it comes up, and you, you, you enjoy it more than once. <laughs> well, that's the picture here of how... You and I are to read something from the Word of God and then we revisit it over and over and over again. <laughs> that is truly the etymology of that word, by the way. And then we recognize God's favor when we orient our lives according to God's good purposes. Blessed is this person that allows God to shape his or her view of the world. Blessed is the person who meditates on how is it that God wants me to live and then does so. And it says that that person will have fruit and they will prosper. They'll thrive. Now see, God wants us as a, as, as a tree to be alive, healthy, growing, and thriving. By the way, I read something this week that unlike humans and unlike animals, trees never stop growing. They actually stop growing in height, but then 
they even increase in growing in girth. Now, I really can't tell you uh, whether that website was truly the best website or not. But that's what I heard. And I know, that, I know that this, God does not want you or I, when it comes to our relationship with him, to stop growing. Now, I'm going to tell you one last thing. I didn't read the last few verses of Psalm 1, but there's a contrast here. Those people who walk with the ungodly who stand with the ungodly and who sit with the ungodly, who care nothing about God or if he exists or how he wants us to live. Those people who do not look to God, our creator, for how to live their lives, it says that they are like chaff. And when the wind blows... And that healthy tree has its roots. That tree is firm. But when those who have lived in disregard for God, it's like you throw them up in the air and there's no life. There's no root. There's no fruit. There's nothing that lasts. And so, that's the way that Psalm 1 ends. And I want to say, you and I can choose might. If you really want to grow strong, if that really becomes your priority, you will not waste your life, and you will never become less than God has in mind for you to be. I'm going to pray. Oh God, this natural world is truly mind-blowing, amazing. And you place those pictures in front of us in order for us to apply that truth to our relationship with you and your word, and so we are able to be alive and functioning and fruitful and useful, and we're able to remain stout and stalwart. God, help each of us to determine to grow mighty. Amen.